Today, we're taking a look at immortality. Yes, that's right. We're addressing the very concept of death itself. The grim specter of the encroaching darkness haunts us all and takes us to some strange and existential places. Looking at you, Whitney. That is, of course, if you don't manage to pass the three trials of the Temple of the Sun and pick the correct grail. Man, are you enjoying this intro? It's already completely off the rails. Let's start over. Your bike is going to die. I'm sorry, but unless you're riding around on a Honda, it's destined for death. Either the engine will wear out, the frame might crack, or your electrical system might get screwed thanks to messy electrical mods or just plain old dust. But yeah, the title says you're going to make my bike live forever. You have answers, right? Well, sort of. I've collected seven tips and tricks that you can use use to keep your bike running and riding smooth for years and years. Some of these things are obvious and some of the other ones you might not think of, but even if you do all seven and sprinkle your bike in pixie dust and cover it in gremlin bells, remember you're going to reach a point where repairing and replacing worn out parts is more costly than the bike is worth, and it's destined for Craigslist, my dude. Sometimes the best thing you can do is pull the plug and get a new ride, but let's check out these tips to keep your bike factory fresh. First thing you should be doing is maintain the health of your motorcycle in the long run is to let the bike warm up. This applies to just about every bike on the planet, except for electric bikes. Those are good the second you turn the key. Letting your engine warm up is the best way to make sure that you've got an even distribution of oil throughout the engine and everything is working properly. On most motorcycles, the low end of standard operating temperature is around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. That's oil temperature, by the way, not the water temp from your radiator. When your bike is cold, let it idle and build up heat for a solid three to four minutes. Don't immediately just turn it on and send it to Redline. That's only good for my Daytona race bike. It's especially important if you let your bike sit a few days or maybe a few weeks. All the oil in the top end of the engine will slowly collect down at the bottom of the case, and while you might have a thin protective film between moving parts, it's not as thick as it normally is, allowing metal to rub against metal. That can carve scratches into the side of the pistons, rings, cylinder walls, and more. It's also worth remembering that as metal heats up, it expands, meaning that the seal you have between parts might not be as strong as it otherwise would be at operating temperatures. Some motorcycles, like the BMW r 1250 GS we rode in Utah have limits put on how far you can rev them out on that lift based on engine temperature. Others turn off features below operating temperatures. The VFR 800, for example, won't enable its signature VTEC until it clicks over 160 degrees. To give you an idea of how important operating temperatures is, some bikes like the Fireblade even come with race start modes which perform a specific warm-up cycle automatically. Let your bikes warm up, then go full send. You'll thank yourself in the long run. Number two and probably the second best thing you can do for your bike is obvious. It's do your maintenance, you dingus. Yes, valve checks are expensive. Yes, doing basic maintenance stuff yourself takes a lot of time, but skipping it will sign a death warrant for your bike. First things first, you should change your oil every 3,000 miles. Yes, it can last longer, but a couple of quarts of oil every few months is a small price to pay for a healthy engine. If you're running a bike with a huge amount of oil in it, like some Harleys and big V-twins that need close to five quarts, you're fine to skip a few hundred miles. But some bikes like the Husky 701 only carry 1.8 quarts. That's basically nothing and those engines run hot. That little oil would degrade faster and can cause damage to the engine, especially if you're riding around in super hot places like Texas. Check your valves at the stated intervals and if you want to be super extra safe, go ahead and replace your head gasket when you pull it off. Some can be reused, but it's a bit of a false economy if you end up blowing that head gasket and leaking water into your engine. Yeah, it's a bit of an added expense, but on most bikes, valves are between 10 and 15,000 miles apart, crying in Desmo services for Ducati. If you plan on doing the maintenance yourself and research the things you'll need for your next interval while they're stacking up the mileage to get there. That way, if you need to rebuild a clutch or something, you won't be riding your bike past those intervals while you wait for parts. Doing your regular and basic maintenance on your motorcycle is probably the best way to ensure that it will live forever. But if you need a little bit of help working on your bike and you don't want to trust those forum dads out there on interwebs, why not check out our Discord server? We've got a massive community of riders running all the way from those who've never turned a wrench before to people who literally work on bikes for a living. There's a channel specifically devoted to fixing up your bike, and there's always someone there to help out, or at least help you Google around and find the answer. Click the link down below and go to yamanoob.co where you can sign up and win our exclusive giveaway motorcycles, get access to our server at the same time. You'll also get access to our live streams, behind the scene looks at content, and what is going on at Yammy Noob. You also get to hang out with me. I'm there every day. How cool is that? 
Click the link right below and get started. Number three today is to use good fluids and parts. I'm not sure why I have to say it, but no KLR people. 5W40 is not what you're supposed to be running on your bike, neither is honey or olive oil or whatever else you have lying around. Is there a really a practical difference between full synthetic and semi-synthetic to the average rider? No, not really, but at crazy high RPMs, it can break down quicker and reduce the health of your engine. You don't need to run super high quality racing oils in your street bike to keep it running tip top shape. However, that doesn't mean you should be cheaping out either. At minimum, use the oil that's recommended in your owner's manual and stick with the recommended weight of oil. There's sometimes you might want to increase your oil weight again if you're riding around in a Texas summer. Heavier weight oil will tend to last a little longer, but if you're in summer with a temperate and your cooler winter, you should just stick to the spec in your good book. When it comes to brake fluid, you should always pull from a fresh can because it reacts with water and can degrade faster or limit braking performance. Also, a can of DOT brake fluid is like $12. Come on, my guy, you can afford it. While we're talking about fluids, one thing that's going to help improve your engine's health is to burn the right gas. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this one's sort of snake oil. Sort of. Here's why. Older bikes and lower compression motorcycles can't take advantage of higher octanes, and that's why you don't need 93 octane to avoid pre-detonation in your engine. Now, if you're on a modern sport bike, you should always be running high octane gas because your compression is higher, and on lower octanes, you might have enough force to cause the gas to burn unevenly. This can put undue pressure on your pistons, connecting rods, wearing them prematurely, and in worst cases, actually cracking them. That doesn't mean that running low octane gas is an immediate death sentence, though. If you're out in the middle of the country and you don't have access to 93 or 91, you can run 87 and be just fine, just don't hit wide open throttle. Keep the revs low and if you're paranoid, you can add an octane booster. Now, why would anyone want to burn 93 in a bike like a DRZ for example? Well, a lot of brands put detergents in their gas, which can, and I need to emphasize the can here, they can improve the engine life. It can remove some carbon buildup and other crap that might build up in your engine, so burning a tank of 93 every so often isn't a bad idea. Don't expect a massive difference or anything, but hey, it could help. And again, it's like $12 for a full can of Supreme. Number five today is going to piss off a lot of the diehard modders out there, and it's to not modify your bike for power. Oftentimes, the best thing you can do for your engine is to just not mess with it. Think about it like this. You've got a 40 pound fish hook and you're constantly stringing up 40 pounders, you'll wear it out. But if you're only putting 30 pounds of weight on it, then it'll basically never break. It's not a perfect analogy, but you get what I'm saying, right? Basically, don't stress your engine any more than you have to. Could you squeeze a few extra horsepower of your bike? Probably. Will it make a difference? No. Did you put a power commander on your Ninja 400 to get it from 49 to 51 horsepower? whoop de doo Who cares? Usually best left not screwing around with any of that stuff. Now, there's an elephant in the room to address here, and it's the propensity of modern motorcycles to ship super crazy lean from the factory. This is not good for the long-term health of the motorcycle, since it means the bike's going to run hotter than it needs to otherwise. And the reason manufacturers do this is for emission regulations, by the way. In cases like that, messing with the fuel system can help improve the lifespan of your motor, but aside from richening the mixture a little bit, I wouldn't do anything else. See the earlier fish hook analogy. Also, most modern bikes make plenty of power to have fun with. You really don't need an extra four or five horsepower. You guys are fine. Number six is another obvious one, but don't rev the balls off your bike. If your bike lives its life near Redline, it'll be exciting, sure, but it might not live to see its fifth birthday. If you want to know the whole deal with why you shouldn't run your bike at or above Redline, it has to do with valve float, which happens when the engine is spinning fast faster than the return springs on the valves can close them. This means you could theoretically have an upstroke on your piston happen while the valve is still open, and then you smush piston into valve and you end up with engine confetti. You don't want to nuke your engine, simply shift sooner. Bouncing off the limiter every now and then isn't going to be an issue because the factory sets the limiter before valve float occurs, but you can bypass it with tunes or flashes so it's worth being careful. You also forget that oftentimes bikes don't make peak power at redline. You usually start to see a taper off near the top unless it's a race bike. Last up today, it's to store your bike dry. This has two meanings. First, don't ride in a rainstorm and immediately chuck your bike under cover unless you want it to turn into a giant rusted pile of garbage. Bolts on your bike will seize and rust in place, dust and water will accumulate in places it shouldn't, gumming up your air filter, getting under your seat and messing with the electronics, or just ruining your paint. If you're extremely unlucky, the water will mix with the accumulated gooch juice in your seat, creating a sentient fungus that will exterminate humanity. That actually almost happened with the original seat on the hentai hornet, but don't worry, I tossed it into a volcano, so we're all good. The other meaning to store your bike dry is to store it without any fluids in the bike. Drain your oil, your gas, whatever other fluids you have on board before putting your bike in the deep freeze. If you're only winterizing your bike, you can put stabilizer in your gas to keep it in good shape. You don't need to drain your tank for winter. Just make sure your tank is topped off so it doesn't rust. But if you're putting your bike into a stasis for the journey into the LV246 system, then you should drain everything. It'll keep you from having to deal with everything with the gummed up lines, worn out brake fluid, and more. 
Fact, Lego has an underground vault with every set ever made. That's kind of neat. Goodbye. Well, 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 my little squid, you've made it to the end of yet another Yammy Noob video. Thank you so much for watching. Just for you, got a little treat for you right over here. Brand new video for you. You can watch it, check it out. There's probably some squidding, some street riding, maybe some track riding. Maybe I'm bending my Ducati off-road. Who knows what's going on in that video? You should probably click on it and find out.